Hey guys, uh, so some more good times with touch. So I had this experiment going on. And uh, yeah, I want to do something like this for a while. Uh, just the idea is that there is a solid flat color on the polys and the rest is pretty much to make it look a bit more interesting. And it was, uh, it was quite actually quite interesting just getting there. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about that, kind of show you uh, what I came across. And I will stop it in the background just because it's a bit distracting. Just let me see, I think I display this guy here. Okay. Something's wrong with my keyboard's buttons. So, uh, in the beginning I thought, you know, how to, uh, how to uh, put the colors on the primitives. Uh, it's because, you know, polys are primitives, so I thought just get a... Get a primitive node. Uh, because if you when, when you go assigning colors to the to the points you get you get smooth colors and I want to, ha to get, have solid colors so I, I just thought you know I can go to the primitive and I can um, create a new color like this and I could simply say um, random and I could say The index of the current primitive you know and i get some color like this which would be which would be cool but then it turns out i can't really do that because i can't get the uh, color from the primitives to the points and all the interesting stuff that you do with rendering is involving points so i had to do it in another way and what i figured is that uh, um to get like uh, to get a flat color by by some like a flat data value by um, for each normal, it would uh, I, I could get it from uh, flat normals. So the facet node has an option which says unique points. So what happens here is that um, first you have to be aware that touch does not have a mechanism to do. Um, to deal with uh, the smoothing of the normals separately from the from the vertices. So, uh, if you, if uh, two polys share verts, their normals are going to be smoothed, and that's not something that I wanted. So here, the unique points option is actually breaking off each poly's verts um, <clears throat> on off onto their own. So, in the neighboring polys, you're you're going to have the neighboring verts actually broken off, and you're going to have two verts uh, for each. Uh, of the old words and the the new words are going to be shaping up the the new polys so basically the polys do not share words together so this is giving me a flat uh, plane a flat color for each of the um, of the polys so then i can use this flat value for each poly to do a uv lookup and um, I, I go to i take these values out in a soap uh, in a top to chop, sorry, and then I do a, a UV lookup with a top to chop to a color, and I what do I do here? Nothing. Okay, so yeah, this was just in case. So then I can return these values to the primitive with a, a chop to sop. You can see here I have the color, uh, the, the the inputs, the outputs, and there you go. I have the um, the flat colors by, by poly. But if I skip a couple of these things here. So if I then start to deform, you can see that the whole thing is breaking up just because previously we had um, broken off each poly in uh, each poly's verts separately, just so because we can do this uh, flat stuff. So to be able to deform it, then I need to reverse uh, that process back. So I have to uh, use another face node and there I have the consolidated normals. So once this is done, 
then I can uh, deform it and it's gonna stay flat, uh, stay, uh, <coughs> I mean, uh, it's not gonna break. And you can see that the normals are again the smooth from the surface. So, you know, there is no way that I have uh, found which is giving me, you know, the flat normals. But still, it's not breaking, which is nice. Uh, so then the rest of it is simply just some things to make it look a bit nicer. I have added uh, noisy rotations on the transform and yeah, just you can always add some noise on some features and make the whole thing looks, look interesting. Uh, then some noise for the displacement. Then I have uh, broken off another branch and I have created a wire which is also a thing that you can do in, um, in the, on the material level. Uh, but here is, you know, like the, the thickness of the wire, because the thickness of the, the wire radius is, is a fixed number. So when it goes farther from you, it's going to become smaller just because you see the geometry from farther away. So there are a couple of features that, that are better in the geometry version rather than the material version. Uh, it's a bit heavy on the geometry side, but if your polygons not too many, it's okay. You still, you, you can see I'm still uh, being like comfortably real time here. And I have merged these uh, things together uh, because I wanted to clear the color for the wireframe. Um, now you can see uh, the color is the same actually as the as the one uh, as, as the one on the poly. So I simply on the points I assign them the white color uh, with with a point node. So which is allowing me to you know assign a property per uh, for all these points. So uh, then I have <coughs> I merge them back together and I send it to the geometry comp where I give them a constant shader which is what I want to have uh, for the flatness to have like this nice flat poppy. Um, kaleidoscopy jellyfish look and then I move the camera around uh, with some noise too just because it's fun you know so to, to, to make it a bit more dynamic a bit more moving and then I do some um, glowing of the uh, wireframe so um, because I don't want to first I want to just like isolate the wireframe only from the geo uh, which I do with um, with a threshold because the wireframe is bright and the, the other stuff less so. Uh, but then I multiply that with um, with a monochromatic moving noise just because I don't want to glow everywhere. Um, I want to have a bit more dynamic. This is uh, these are all things that kind of came up uh, from just me needing to break it up a little bit because it was being too uniform everywhere. So. Uh, something that you can always do is like mask off some areas and apply an effect also only to to, uh, to to some areas of the image, so it's not uh, so it, it's just more interesting. Uh, then blur it a little bit. So basically, blurring and uh, level, leveling it up is uh, uh, giving you a glow effect. So blur, level it up. Then uh, some feedback to kind of to kind of accent on, on on that glowing look because you know like these glowing things tend to be trailly it, it like look, uh, works quite better but you can see it's quite soft it's not you know too overwhelming then i have a background which is um, a very low resolution colored noise which is blurred and then i have a pulsing uh, you can see in the final effect uh, you can see there is there is pulsing where the glowing of the um, wire and the background are pulsing so when, whenever the the wire glows the background also glows up a little bit and stuff like that so to get this pulsing going i just have an lfo which i send uh, to the level of the uh, basic geometry so uh, actually just uh, adjusting the gamma so making it a bit darker when the lfo is down just to just to give it a pulse, you know, a beat. If uh, you use this with a with a music installation somewhere, and then I also use this LFO to drive levels on that um, on the background. Again, a gamma node, and I'm just adjusting. Uh, you can see here I have some expression because I want to kind of calibrate the uh, the the results. 
just multiply by something and uh, shift it up. And I just calibrate with the, with the other level. I just calibrate to the um, to the amount of stuff I need at the background. Like if I need more background, I could do it like this. But I felt that you know it needs to be just filling up something so that's an environment, but not overwhelm the main effect. And at the end, this is the kind of thing that you end up with. Um, it's it's kind it's kind of fun. I'm enjoying it. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna post a link to the um, tow file in the video description and yeah, see you next time.